Hi, I'm Michael Greenspan. So let's be honest, for just about all of us, the situation sucks. That's a simple truth, and I'm not going to try and persuade you otherwise. If we're having this conversation, though, let's also acknowledge that for many of us, it could be worse, a lot worse. So whether you've realized it or not, we can each wait for things to go back to how they were, or we can be part of being how the future unfolds. So if you're here, you've almost certainly chosen the latter, which is great. I've been asked to address the question, how to rebound from a downturn and power out of the downturn. Further, I've been asked to address it intentionally from across sectors. In other words, are there any lessons that can be learned from other businesses and other sectors and leaders in other sectors? And just as well, because I almost certainly know less about your sector than anybody on this video conference. So, I'll share 12 ideas and tips that I think apply to many, possibly most sectors and contexts. You need to decide which, if any, are applicable to your unique situation. If a few are, I'll be delighted. Here goes. Number one, what matters most is how you respond now, i.e. during the downturn. If you start rebuilding your business, refining your propositions, strengthening your balance sheet, you're shaping your organization, et cetera, as the economy rebounds, you'll be far too late to thrive. On the flip side, let's be honest. Most people who during the downturn spend most of their time focusing on the long-term health of their business won't even be around to see the economy recover. Number two, find an acceptable balance of surviving your worst case scenario yet somehow also sowing the seed for future growth. Even if that balance is 95%, 5% of your time, because each is necessary, but neither by itself is sufficient. And don't fudge the worst case scenario. Many of us know that what would have been too absurd to even forecast or think about eight weeks ago would in many cases now be a cracking outcome. So as scary as it is, and I know many of you are living with this every day right now, resist the very normal temptation to hide from that reality. But then also somehow find the time to ask yourself, how might this dislocation create new opportunities if we can just shift sufficiently? Number three, be bold. Don't panic, but you must be willing to prioritize and be decisive, not constantly, but periodically. And remember that the little things matter, but sometimes not as much as the big things. Number four, listen, everybody's gonna make mistakes and get things wrong. And in a crisis, speed matters. So don't be afraid of making decisions. You must be willing to act on what feels like incomplete data and information and accept that you will get some things wrong. In fact, if you don't make any mistakes, you're either fantastically lucky, incredibly smart, or just moving too slow. When people criticize or question you, and they will, remember that just comes with the territory and move on. It's not easy, but your organization needs you to. Number five, listen, we all tolerate some things when times are good and pay for them when times aren't. Sometimes that's a deliberate choice, and sometimes it's the old metaphor of the frog not noticing that the gradually warming water is starting to boil. Either way, now's the time to address those issues. But, and it's a big but, your people are unsettled, and if they're not now, they will soon be. So somehow you have to show your human side. That won't be easy. Number six, as someone far more succinct than I am said, preserve cash and wherever possible your team, you're gonna need both. Number seven, we're all seeing examples of change and innovation that can be achieved in a crisis that previously would have been unheard of. Pronounced market and cultural, what we call dislocation, unsettles the routines 
our comfort levels, the status quo that leads so many of us to resist changes that we know make sense because they make us feel uncomfortable. As such, the opportunity to reshape processes, practices, propositions, budgets, even teams is paradoxically greatest in periods of heightened uncertainty. So as trite as it sounds, never waste a crisis. Number eight, except there will continue to be waves of uncertainty and even crisis, and nobody knows exactly what they'll look like. So we all must prepare for things not going to be going back to how they were, and it will require a much more dynamic approach to planning. Coping with uncertainty can be a mental skill, a cultural attribute, a market differentiator, or your company's Achilles heel. It's up to you to decide which it's going to be. Number nine. Listen, financial targets are obviously very useful, but how does one set them with much conviction in periods of dislocation like this? Uh, will air travel, cinema receipts, or dare I say, even road traffic accidents go up 40% in six months, 90% in three months, 20% in 12 months? or even worse, all three. For now, try setting what sports psychologists call achieving goals. These are goals which make people feel just a bit more back in control and are things, for example, like we're gonna deepen our partnerships with government by doubling our resources and management's focus on it. Or we're going to get new propositions to the market in three weeks instead of three months by having our market research and testing phases. Or we're going to show the biggest customers out there why they should stick with us by framing up each rep to focus solely on their top five current and potential accounts. Or even we're going to make sure every manager in our call center feels valued and appreciated by senior management. Number 10. No one knows for sure, but I suspect employees will be incredibly thankful and appreciative even to have, just to have a job and that their employers are still in business. Yet also, because they've seen that there's more to life than just work, I think they'll simultaneously expect real purpose and meaning to their work. And I think they may even punish those employers that don't provide them by leaving. Number 11 do something for the community. If you do it already, you do more. Those on the receiving end need it, your people will really value it, and it'll make you feel good. Number 12, embrace the 5% rule, what we call the 5% rule. Find 5% of your working time, just 5%, to help you be as effective as you can. Just an hour or two per week, if need be, because trying to find more will probably seem unrealistic to you. And use it to think about important but not urgent issues. Reflect on how you're leading and managing. Use it to decompress or even spend time with your kids. Whatever's going to help you be most effective over the long battle in front of you. You're being tested and your people are watching. Lastly, I wish all of you the best of luck. And yes, sometimes luck matters an awful lot through what will be a profound time for all of us. Don't waste this crisis.